Hi everyone, it's Ben Dalhunter here. Is anyone out there? Hi Ben, it's Lynn here. Um, from the registrations, we have five people who have registered it, but they haven't joined the session yet, so we might as well just um, kick off anyway. Okay, so I'll start it? Yes, please. Okay, so are you just going to hit record from there? Yep, I have done. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome. Hi everyone, Ben Dalhunty here from Crate PT Wealth, Master Coach. Um, just talking to you today about uh, going from PT to studio owner in five easy steps and uh, essentially sharing my story with you guys. Um, I own a successful PT studio in Lane Cove in Sydney, Australia. And uh, it was hard at the beginning, but just wanted to show you how I refined it and um, I'm going to show you guys today how to do it in five steps. Um, now, if you've got any questions through this webinar, please just shoot them through to me by, uh, by text there and I'll pick up some of the questions and hopefully try and answer them through the webinar itself. Um, again, great to have you along and let's get going. So the first question I have for you guys is why are you here today? It's, um, it's one of those things that you know people log in and sometimes they don't know what to expect. But Sometimes they just want some uh, some questions cleared up in their head based on uh, their career and where they're at. So sometimes it's you know they're burnt out, buggered, and busted. They're the three Bs um, that usually go with the fitness industry. Um, us as trainers, you know, we work so hard uh, on the technical side of things and don't get to much uh, work much on our business. So it's really important, and this webinar will show you just how to make that change if you need a change, and uh, that's why some of you might be here today. The other thing is you might want to get to the next level in your career. So you might be a personal trainer, um, just fresh into the industry, um, or you might have been in the industry you know, five or ten years and you just want to go to the next level of starting your own studio. Um, when I say next level, it's just you know, next career level, um, next challenge, or next revenue level. You know, all those things come into play. And the other question I have for you guys is, you know, why a studio? Um, some of you might be thinking, oh well, it's the great thing to do these days, everyone's doing it, um, but we don't know much about it. So I'm going to show you a bit about that today and get you thinking about what type of studio to use, uh, to go to too, so what, uh, what model um, or blueprint you might want to use. So the question is really, are you ready? Um, I'm ready to rip in, so let's get going. What I've done today is just listed a few things uh, pros and cons of a PT versus a studio owner. And look, there are many more, but I just thought I'd touch on a few things here today. And like I said uh, at the start, if you've got any questions, just fire them across to me via the text, uh, via the chat there. So as we can see on this slide, you've got your uh, you've got your PT column and then you've got your studio owner column. So the PT, if we can just scroll through it, your revenue relies solely on your hours work. So we're just swapping time for money there as PTs and group exercise. Um, getting paid for the work that we do and really nothing else. Um, PTs are weather dependent uh, if you're doing outdoor PT. Obviously not so if you're working in a gym uh, renting space there. Um, with that comes a cost though of course uh, and no cost working outdoors. Um, you're not really earning any revenue while you're sick or on holidays as a PT. Uh, obviously you know that, that's a bit of a, a struggle. You know, we all want to take holidays and we all need holidays. Just to, wind down and recharge your batteries. So it's good just to um, find, uh, I guess, a way in which we can earn money while, we're, while we are sick, um, if we do get sick, unfortunately we all do, um, or while we're on holidays. Or if you know your client base is a little bit low, you can earn revenue other ways too. So there's also a limited growth on brand uh, while you're a PT. You know, it's just you. You're out there doing the hard yards yourself and not really uh, you know, growing your brand into different areas. So whereas a studio owner, you potentially could do that. Um, studio owner column, look, we've got the things there. More revenue, uh, there's, sorry, more revenue streams available. 
Uh, we can incorporate group exercise under the one roof as well as PP. We can incorporate studio memberships. Uh, we can sell products for our studio. Uh, we can even have a couple of rooms where we do massage, etc. So there are different ways to make money if you own your own studio. Um, studios are independent of weather, of course. So you're looking at, uh, you know, um, obviously if it's raining, you're okay. Um, and if you, you know, if it's nice weather, you can also have the option of doing outdoor work too. So there's lots of different options there. Um, all services under the one roof, as I mentioned before, um, which lead to more revenue streams. You get paid while you're on holidays because you have staff working for you and bring in that extra cash. And working with a team is invaluable, I think. You know, from the years that I've been a personal trainer um, and studio owner, uh, I've noticed that working with a team really just keeps you going in the industry. It keeps you motivated, sets new challenges, um, sets new challenges for the team, but also for yourself. The big thing I've learned is to uh, manage a team, and that's fun. You know, I really enjoy that as part of my day-to-day uh, -day duties now, managing the team. I've got a studio manager that works for me and manages the studio uh, team themselves. But um, I think the good thing about it as a studio owner is to go in and check in with that manager, go in and sit in on the team meetings, and just, um, I guess, take a back step and a uh, back step approach to the business where you can work under it a little more and try and push it up, prop it up. Um, I think also being a studio owner, there's more opportunity for growth. You know, there's so many more things you can do by freeing up your time as a PT or a technician. You know, you can uh, you can be a manager of the studio first up. Uh, if you don't want to be a manager, um, you can go and do uh, workshops outside, uh, work in the community a little more to build your studio, um, and just generally uh, do other things that you want to do uh, rather than actually be a PT uh, full time. So again, just a little bit about me because I think that it's important that you guys know where I'm coming from and that this has some substance behind it. It's not just you know, someone's put together a webinar who doesn't really know much about studios or, or being a PT. You know, I've been in the industry 15 years now uh, as a personal trainer and I still am a trainer. I still work uh, as a technician, um, you know, five to six face-to-face -face hours a week and I love that component and it keeps you grounded, keeps you in the industry and understanding what, what personal trainers are going through. So I just love the component of the industry, you know, the face-to-face -face value. Um, I've got a studio, like I said, Fitness Revelation, and you can look that up, uh, fitnessrevelation.com. It's uh, based in Sydney, in Lane Cove, Sydney, and uh, we've been there 10 years. Our studio has physically been the ones that spot for 10 years. There have been opportunities to franchise out, um, but I've just concentrated on that one little pocket, and it's been very successful as a result of me putting all of my energy into that. Um, I stepped away in 2006, uh, sorry, 2008, and started a corporate health company. Um, so that was part of the stepping away process as being studio owner. I had the freedom to do that, and so that was good. Really loved that, and I still run that company too. But so far as a studio, you know, we're established in 2004, and we started small and simple. And it's really important, I think, to to, to understand that you don't have to be big and flashy straight away. You know, starting small and working your way up um, holds a lot of merit, uh, and you know you can really see some great growth opportunities financially, um, as well as physically if you start a little bit small. So we offer personal training memberships, studio memberships, and group exercises, uh, boot camps, and massage as well. So we combine them all together, and people can package them up, or they can buy them as individual programs and services. And it's important, uh, you know, to be offering as many things as possible, um, but keeping it quite niche to your demographic. And we'll talk a bit about that later. So we can talk about a bit about it now. This is the next point uh, flows through is we narrowed our services down for our demographic. So we offered those sort of services that uh, would be appealing to our demographic. And for the first little part, that was very. Um, uh, how do you say it? I guess it was a bit of, we just relied on feedback uh, from our clients. Uh, they told us what they wanted essentially and then we worked out the rest. And we offer really great packages as you'll see on our website to suit our demographic, which is quite an affluent area located in the lower north shore peninsula of Sydney. Another thing about our studio is we upgraded equipment when we could afford it. Like I said before, you don't have to go flashy straight away. As personal trainers, you know, like I said, we're swapping our time for money, we're scraping our money together and putting money in savings and, and, 
and boosting our business and obviously putting money back into your business is fantastic um, and you should be doing that, um, but only when you can afford it. And clients appreciate that. I think you know if you do that from year to year, just put a little bit of money uh, back into your business, they really appreciate the fact that you're looking after them and you're looking after your business. The big thing for us is our service was offered above expectations. So being the client expectations, um, you know, we offered services above and beyond. We went out of our way and just went the extra mile. And people love that. And that's the difference with a personal training studio compared to a gym, in my experience, is that you do have the time and the energy to concentrate on the people rather than putting all your money into the marketing and, and everything else. You know, it doesn't always take a lot of uh, marketing to keep the people happy. Um, as you'll see uh, in a couple of a couple of points, we've got a 92% retention with our clients. And the average in gyms across Australia is 63%. So that's a big jump. That's almost a 30% increase in client retention that we don't have to spend on our marketing from year to year. So I really think that's important. You know, we have a like I said there, 92%, uh, we've got an 8% drop off that means. So really, just to get back to uh, the 100% mark, we just need 8% growth each year, and we usually do that in January, February, March. So we're good for the rest of the year there. Um, second last point there, I just skipped over. We need to, or we do, invest in our members, and that's investing back in equipment, um, retention and reward programs for our staff and our members uh, to keep them on board and to keep everything ticking over. Because remember, it's much, much harder to bring in new members. The time, the energy, uh, and the, the finance spent on bringing in new people um, rather than keeping your existing ones. They're your fans. They love you. They're there for you. So you just have to keep them happy and keep going about the same way you always had uh, to get them in in the first place. So back to the, uh, the goal of this webinar is to talk about the five steps that we get you from PT to studio owner. So number one is the vision. You've got to have a clear vision about what you want to do. As a personal trainer out there, thinking about starting your own studio, you first have to have a vision of what that studio is going to be. What's going to help you in the next step is the blueprint or the model. So you've probably got a little bit of an idea about what you want it to look like or the feel of it and the culture that you want to build on. And that's number two. Number three is the belief. And I, I personally believe that this is the big one, so the belief that you can do it, that you can cross over and go from PT to studio owner. Now, not a lot of people can do it, incidentally. It is a skill set, and you can learn it, um, but some people are born with it. It's just one of those things that you, it does come with time. So even if you are a PT and a fantastic technician, and you don't think you can do it, I'd turn that right around. Start believing. Believe you can do it. Get in there. Learn from studio owners out there and understand what they do. The biggest mistake I made as a studio owner, before I was a studio owner, as a PT, was not working for one of the industry's finest studio owners, uh, Gavin Aquilina. I had the opportunity to work with him uh, three years before I started my own studio, uh, but went for a higher paying gig, uh, which was still in a gym, not a studio. Um, but I think if I could go back and do it all again, I would. You know, I'd, uh, I'd uh, serve an apprenticeship under Gavin, um, take a bit of a pay cut early on, but just understand what was going on there. And that's why it's really important, you know, this coaching program, the Great PT World Coaching Program, is you get great advice from people who have been there and done it, and you can really learn off them and fast track your transition to being a studio owner too. So the resources at number four, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a minute, but the resources including um, the materials, uh, the support network, and uh, and the location, etc. You know what you're really looking for to build um, a studio. And lastly, the execution of getting that plan happening. So if we just carry on into step one, the vision. So with your step one, the vision, you want to work out your business model. You want to go through the nuts and bolts about. Uh, why you're doing it, what it's going to be, um, what it's going to give you, um, you know, the marketing, your budgets, uh, the projections, everything like that. So you've got to work out your business model, you know, what it's going to serve, who, what community you're going to serve, what demographic, um, 
who are you going to look after, what age demographic as well, and uh, you know, what are they going to give back to you? What's the purpose? So do your research on the location and the demographic as well. What I did is I went to council first and I looked at all the gyms in the area that I was looking at, what they offered, who they served, and then what my model was going to be and how I could potentially fit into there. And I worked it out. I could work into the niche market where I wanted to work in. It wasn't uh, in existence just yet and there was a clear pathway in. So I worked that out early. Um, with your business plan, you want to crunch your numbers, like I said, as well. You know, make sure you know your break-even point. And even if you don't know the exact numbers, just get an idea about what your expenses might be, what things might cost, what your equipment budget will be, what your lease costs will be, and then potentially what your staffing costs will be further down the track once you start to employ staff or contractors. In step one, we're looking at your point of difference or your USP as well. You know, what's, what's your point of difference or unique selling uh, position or proposition? So what's going to make you different from the rest of the crowd? How are you going to stand out? And that is really, really important. You know, for us, for example, for our studio, I wanted to make sure that we stood out by offering a range of personalised services. And this was 10 years ago, mind you, so there weren't many studios out there like this, like what we've got. Um, so we wanted to offer indoor and outdoor training. So I sourced a spot, a local bowling club, which has facilitated that. We've got two big bowling greens out the back where we run our boot camps, but inside we've got a boutique studio as well where we handle our one-on-one -on -one training sessions uh, with a massage room as well for our massage. So I had a vision and I just sourced the right location for that to happen. The next thing is what support do you have to drive this? So who's around you that can actually help you on your mission here? Because you're not, you don't have to do it all by yourself and that's one of the things that I, I did early on. I thought, well, look, I can do this all by myself. You know, I've got the know-how and I've got the confidence, which I did. I had the confidence in my ability, um, not so much as a business owner, but uh, as a personal trainer, and I just thought that the rest would come. Now, it did come eventually, but I think, I know in hindsight, you've got to go back and have a look at that support network that you've currently got and try and work out how they can help you too. And it might just be as simple as local business. You know, how can the local businesses around you support you? and get your message out there about what you currently do and what you're looking to do with this studio. The next thing is what's your role in this? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to be that technician? Are you going to be the manager or are you going to be the entrepreneur or the business owner that drives this thing? So what I did is I, I started so quickly that I was the technician and doing all the sessions and uh, you know, managing and owning and doing everything at once, wearing many, many hats. And you can do all that. Um, it's very, very hard and what ended up happening is I was working big days, 15, 16 hour days and then sleeping at the studio overnight um, because I lived out of the area. It was just too hard to get home uh, and to start all again the next day. So I ended up sleeping at the studio. So it's not the best story and I wouldn't recommend that to anyone to be quite honest, uh, but it's my journey and, and I've been there and done it. I did it the hard way, but today hopefully at the end of this uh, webinar I can show a little bit of an easier way in which to go through this transition. And lastly, on the step one, the vision, what will it give you? You know, that's the other thing as well. We're looking at what's the outcome for you guys? Uh, is it financial gain? Is it personal satisfaction uh, for a, a jump in your career or a tick in the box to say, yep, I've opened my, up my own studio. Uh, what's next? Um, you know, what is it? You know, what is this going to give you? They're going to give you enough finance to support your family. Um, you know, it's really up to you guys there. Now step two is the model or the blueprint. All right, now the five-step process. Step two is the model or the blueprint. Now, there are a couple of different types of studios out there at the moment, and studios are the thing at the moment. Uh, in the last five years, studios have increased momentum um, dramatically. You know, there's obviously a couple of different models I'm going to talk about today, including a PT-only studio. Vision. Um, they've got uh, franchises up and down the east coast of Australia and branching into New Zealand now. Um, we've got yoga and Pilates studios, independents as well as franchises. Uh, you've got group training only, so step into life and boot camps. Uh, you've got a membership base there as well, 24 hour gyms, uh, your any times, uh, the snaps and things like that. Uh, holistic health are generally independent wellness clinics. Uh, there are some franchises out there though that offer everything. 
And uh, last of studio in a box, that's the one that I'm launching, a uh, bit of a plug here for uh, the fitness industry and it's a license, not a franchise. It's a fraction of the cost of actual uh, franchises out there but gives you all the nuts and bolts about how to start your own studio just like we've done here in Sydney. So there's that one too. So for step two, I just want you guys to be really be clear on your blueprint or your model. It doesn't have to be Mickey Mouse, but just an idea about what you might want to go into. You know, what's the next step for you from personal trainer into the studio? And it's always good to have a blueprint. And it could be an independent model of all of these. Um, it doesn't have to be on this list, or it might be a combination of all of them. You know, you might come up with your own studio model. Um, but yeah, it, as long as it serves the community and as long as it ticks the boxes your goal or your purpose. Step three out of five is the belief. Like I said at the start, this is the, this is the big one. This is the one where if you don't have the belief, then you won't be successful with a studio or whatever you're going to do out there. You've got to believe in yourself. And sometimes it takes a little while to believe. You know, some people don't have it naturally or some people just don't, uh, just don't get um, uh, the idea of what a studio is so they don't have the belief in themselves to be able to run one. But I think if you have the courage to do it, first of all, um, you're going to have the belief to do it and you're going to have the success with it. So try and just go by that little model there. We have our, uh, our motto being uh, begin it, believe it, achieve it. That's our studio model. So begin the journey, believe you can do it, and then achieve the result. That's what we talk about at Fitness Revelation. So with the belief, it's all about the mental preparation. And it's just not done on a, an overnight thing. It's just not an overnight thing that you do. Um, I think it's a day-to-day -day process um, when you're at that PT level and you're looking to start your own studio. You know, it's a big step, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's a tough step. It's not going to be easy. And those out there who might be listening in today who own their own studios will agree with me. You know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not easy uh, starting your own studio and working in your own studio uh, and then going to the next level of leaving your own studio even, you know, because they're all different parts of having your own studio and they're all as hard as each other, but they're not impossible. The mental preparation, the things that I did, uh, the things that helped me were just researching as much as possible into what a studio was, into what I wanted to do, and researching the people around me and how they could help me, you know, from solicitors through to real estate agents, uh, even people on council. Um, I became friendly with each of those and fortunately enough for me, a lot of those people uh, were uh, clients of the studio or became clients of the studio. So I was in contact with them on a weekly basis and they really were able to help me out uh, and guide me through the whole process. The other thing is the commitment to the task ahead. When I say that, I mean not just the task of owning your own studio, but every single day, you know, getting up, you know, living and breathing, the studio itself, you know, so you've got to be ingrained in that studio if you want to be, uh, I guess, um, in that role of being a studio manager or the technician within the studio. Uh, on the flip side, if you want to be a studio owner from the start, then you need to start to get good at hiring people and hiring good people to run that studio for you uh, with a culture that you want it to be run uh, in. So the commitment to the task ahead is a very general saying or a very general um, uh, term there or statement, but the commitment is within on a daily basis. You know, so getting up at five o'clock every day, going in the studio, sometimes staying till nine o'clock at night. You know, just getting all the little things done throughout the day um, that you know people in I guess a nine to five job wouldn't normally see or do or experience. Okay, so it's a little bit more um, of a commitment, um, but a big big gain if you can get it right. The other thing is. Uh, you know, that I've learned as well is that micromanaging doesn't come easily to most people. So it's important that uh, you teach, or sorry, you learn to micromanage if you're not good at that already, or you, sorry, and when the time comes, you've got to teach that to your staff how to micromanage too. Because you guys are going to be, if you're going from PT to studio owner, you're going to be employing staff. And that's a whole different kettle of fish, but I'll just touch on it quickly, is that your staff are going to be very good technicians. Obviously, if you hire the right people, they're going to be very good technicians and not so good at running their own studio. That's why you are the boss. That's why you have the studio. So what I want you to do is just have a think about, you know, when you go to the next step and if you go to the next step, is about how you did it 
and how you micromanage your day throughout the day and then show them how to do it as well. That's when you'll get a really successful studio humming along, you know, showing them the secrets of how you did it when you were there by yourself. Above all else, and I've put this in bold, I want you to do it for the right reasons. So start your own studio for the right reasons. You know, don't do it because someone else said, hey, you know what, it's a good idea, you should start your own studio. I've heard they're really successful and you can make lots of money. That's not a good reason. You know, it's a good reason long term because yes, you may make a lot of money, but don't do it for someone else or because someone else suggested it to you. You should be doing it because you have the idea or you have the passion behind it and you're more going to, sorry, you're going to be much more successful in getting the result if you do that. I, um, I've come across a few people uh, over the years who have started their own studio and wanted to do it for just flippant reasons, you know, for uh, because it might be a nice thing to do or because they, as I said at the start, you know, you're a personal trainer, you're burnt out, you're buggered and you're busted and you just want to try a change or do something new. Um, unfortunately for those, some of those people, not all of them, some have been very successful, <clears throat> but some of the ones I'm just going to talk about now, they didn't do their research. They didn't go into the, you know, into looking into what it's going to cost them, how much they're going to have to work in it. They didn't have the commitment. Um, they had the belief. They were very, uh, very headstrong actually, and believed they could do it. But unfortunately, they didn't have the resources. They didn't plan. Uh, they didn't look at the systems they were going to bring in. They didn't look at the demographic they wanted to look after. And unfortunately, they become flooded with competition um, and just went under. So it's a bit sad. There are a few sad stories out there like that. <clears throat> so that's why. I've developed this little formula, formula, sorry, or this five-step process, so you guys can just go through and make it a bit more systemized. And it's not the magic formula, by the way, this five-step formula, but it will give you a bit more guidance. You know, going from a personal trainer to a studio owner. Now, step four is the resources, <clears throat> and the resources, as you can see here in this slide, you know, is the finance, the materials, the location. Uh, the experience or the know-how on the outsourcing. Now, I'm going to go through them individually. The resources being finance, obviously, you're looking for capital or cash flow um, to start your own studio. Now, what a lot of people do, uh, a lot of studios and, and um, uh, PTs, when they start their own studio, is they get financed from the bank and they get a bank loan, um, or they get financed to, uh, from an uh, independent broker to finance their equipment, etc. So, and that's all good, there's no problems with that at all, but what I'm suggesting that you guys do is to look at the finance component and see what is the most economical way for you to work this. Do your research into uh, the rent, how much the rent is going to cost, and I always tell my coaching clients, some of you might be out there listening, to get six months worth of rent in the bank so that by the time uh, you have to come around to pay the rent because you might get a rent free period if, you, if you're lucky and your landlord is nice. Generally, you might get a three month um, rent free period. So you're not paying rent till month four. And then the first six months after that, so from month four to month 10 or month 11, um, all your rent is paid for. So there's just a little bit um, of extra peace of mind there. So you can uh, work on a little bit more of the marketing and pushing. Uh, the sales and getting people in, et cetera, et cetera. So by month 10 or 11 of your studio opening, you know, you've got all these people coming through that will, I guess, uh, finance the, the rent, the ongoing rent after that period. Um, that's a big one as well. So uh, I encourage you to just have a bit of a think about that, the finance component. Um, and outsourcing, look at the banks, look at how much uh, you could potentially borrow from each bank uh, and what their interest rates are going to be and how long it will take to pay it back off. Okay, because the idea, of course, with any loan is to pay it off as soon as possible. Um, you don't want that bad debt hanging around. Um, materials, I, I talk about materials when I talk about equipment. You know, what, what have you got available at the moment? You know, what can you start with? As a PT um, in the industry, you know, generally we have a lot of um, pieces of equipment lying around. If you're an outdoor PT, you might have boxing gear and hurdles and sleds and all these different things that you could easily transfer into your studio when you first start. So have a look at that, what's going to save you money there. Um, also materials as in, uh, you know, decking out your, um, your studio. So what structural things need changing? Do any walls need knocking down? Do we need to put up some mirrors? Uh, what, what's all that stuff going to cost you? So looking at that too and combined with finance. Um, location is the 
biggest thing on this page in in respect to resources. Um, location is going to make or break you, to be quite honest. Um, what I always recommend is having a location on a uh, on a visible um, area, which when I say visible, visible to passers by, um, either by car, bus, um, joggers by, walkers by, it doesn't matter, as long as people can see you in transit. Okay, so obviously shop fronts are great. Um, we're located, our studio is located on the corner of a busy road, at the main road through Longerville and Lane Cove. So that really helps us. Uh, it's, it's in the Longerville Sporting Club. So we get a lot of people coming here on the weekends uh, to socialise, play social bowls, have a drink, uh, have something to eat, etc. And they see our studio just across across the hall there. So look, we're very lucky in that respect, um, but luck doesn't have everything to do with it. I did do my research and I sourced this location as well. So I negotiated pretty, pretty hard to get it to. So uh, that all goes into it. Um, when we're talking about location and the resources, I'm talking to you as well about talking to council and talking to them about you know what you need to do in order to get that location. You know what are the permits you need, um, what zoning is it, how many car spaces can you have, uh, and all those things. You know, so you need to really line your ducks up before you get going with any studio, and this is just part of step four. Um, we're going into experience and know-how, so. I think experience in this area is invaluable. You know, if you have experience in setting up your own studio, after you've done the first one, there's no reason why you can't do many, many more after that. So uh, your first one is always going to be the hardest. It's like with anything. You, know, you try something for the first time, you're always, you know, it's not going to be perfect. You can build on it and you just shape and mould it to what you want it to be. Um, but at the start, it's not going to be perfect. So that's the other thing. Don't beat yourself up about it straight away. I think you just really got to have a go. and. It, at the end of the day, you know, it might take a couple of months, might take a couple of years um, to get it right, but after you've got a humming, you're really going to see a good reward. Um, but there is no substitute for experience or know-how in this industry when you're starting up your own studio. So, like I said at the start, you know, draw on the coaches here for experience. You know, you know now that I've, I've been there and done it, so I'm happy to take any uh, inquiries that you guys have, sorry, any questions after uh, this webinar and you can get my um, exact details from head office there, um, or you can just shoot me through some questions on the chat here right now. Um, now, the other thing with setting up your own studio in step four under the resources is outsourcing. So, some people out there, and I was one of these people incidentally, that just wanted to do it all myself. You know, I thought, yep, I know how to do it, I've, I've worked in gyms before, I know what they do wrong, so all I've got to do now is flip it around and make it right. Problem with that is, I didn't know the process in which to make it right. So I didn't outsource, I didn't get people in to help me, I didn't hire a coach, um, I didn't hire even uh, labourers to help me you know, get it all going straight away um, you know, with materials and so forth. Uh, I didn't get someone to help me with my studio layout, you know, design the studio. Um, so over the years we've redesigned the whole place and, and uh, you know, that's not too bad, that's not too much of a headache, but at the same time if you can get it right from the beginning, um, it allows for a much more, uh, I guess, an easier flow um, over the years. Um, outsourcing also includes your legals, like getting uh, a good lawyer or solicitor, um, getting good people around you, like graphic designers, um, great PT Wolf, have got a great social media experts, Leanne out there, um, and also, um, uh, sorry, uh, also really good graphic designers too. So. Guys, for all your marketing material and everything like that, you've got no excuse, crack PC models, everything for you. Um, but outsourcing, you know, legal advice, um, I'd recommend you, know, you get good, uh, good people in the area, like good networks, uh, physios, chiros, um, health professionals just in general. Um, shop owners like cafes, delis, people all in the area to help you promote your studio. And they're the sorts of people I'm talking about for outsourcing. Um, even just hiring people maybe to do mailbox drops for you. It doesn't cost a lot, um, but it saves you time and energy to, to work on the things of building up your business and maybe even initially just being a technician and working on uh, swapping time for money just to get that money in the door first of all uh, to build on the rest of the studio later on. Now the other thing is, I want to throw in a slide here, when most studios go wrong. So, 
a lot of people, a lot of studios out there, like I said at the start, you know, there are no clearly defined plans, no clear systems. Um, we're going from being a PT, you know, we have, uh, you know, your own independent, I guess, business um, as a sole trader, and all of a sudden you have to be a studio. So generally, what that means is your revenue is going to grow. Um, also, your overheads are going to grow a little bit too, but your responsibility is going to grow also. You know, you're in an actual facility now. Um, you've got different insurances to look after. Uh, you've got a few extra things that. You know, you might um, haven't thought about in the past as being an independent PT. So uh, a lot of those things add up, and, and and they can go wrong. So you just want to have everything organised first. Um, when we're talking about no clearly defined plans, that just means you know look how many PTs they've got to do per week to cover the rent first of all, because there'll be rent now. Um, what the business is going to look like in one year, what the business is going to look like in five years, uh, what the outlay of the studio is going to look like. Um, what are your overheads, uh, work out a budget, um, what memberships are you going to offer, all these things, it just all adds up and systems come with all these things too. So, you know, uh, occupational health and safety systems, um, new member inquiry systems, um, staff recruitment systems, so there's a lot more things that go into a business, I guess a studio business, than there is a, uh, a PT business. And look, I've been there, like I said, as a PT, so I know this. Um, running a PT business is busy enough, don't get me wrong. Um, going to that next level of owning your own studio, there are just more uh, more things in play, that's all. So you've just got to be prepared for that. What a lot of people do as well, uh, a lot of studio owners don't recruit accountants, uh, website gurus or solicitors, as I've said before. So. Uh, you know, create PT Wealth can look after you in all those areas there, um, or if you're more comfortable sourcing a local solicitor account or website person, um, I definitely recommend you need those people. Um, a lot of studios don't invest in support programs or don't develop new revenue streams as well. So when I say support programs, exactly like we're talking about here, Create PT Wealth is a fantastic support program for you. Um, even your local B&I groups, um, some of you are already uh, involved in those, which is great. So they're just your business networking groups um, that are uh, basically in every area, every postcode or every suburb. Uh, so um, you can really develop some good networks there. They're a bit hit and miss sometimes, uh, and you might not get as much out of it as you want from some of them, uh, but some can be very, very responsive um, to what your studio can offer and can really open up uh, a lot of networks further down the track. Um, some studios are very, very uh, insular in the respect that they um, they do what they do and they don't really project it out there. Uh, they're very guarded, I guess, as well. Um, they don't bring other health professionals in or network with them <clears throat> to work on um, uh, building the health of the community. And I think that's very important, building the health of the community. And you're going to get a lot more people engaged in your studio if you do that too. Um, you probably already do that as a personal trainer. If you're already doing that as a PT, you're absolutely going to do it as a studio, and then you can build even further on those relationships further down the track. Um, some studios don't develop new revenue streams. So like I said, they're very insular. They just concentrate on one thing. They might just be a PT model, and that's all they're doing. They're pumping out PTs week to week, and that's great. And some of these um, PT models really do work quite well. Um, they depend on a lot of factors, though, and they usually capture a certain uh, revenue as well uh, per person. So obviously, you can only charge so much um, per individual uh, with, um, with, with, with your personal training session and you've limited the time as well with that. I mean you can hire more trainers, put them on more floor space, uh, but at the end of the day you're swapping time for money still. So some studios just don't introduce passive revenue streams uh, like online programs, um, even nutrition programs, uh, studio memberships, etc. Et um, lastly, Studios, some studios don't invest in or support their clients enough, so <clears throat> they're just, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know why they don't do this, um, but they just don't put money back into the business and they don't put money back into their clients. And you know, Clients are human, um, we like to be rewarded and we like to see um, our, I guess our stuff out there, our, our achievements out there as well, so if you can make a, a bit of a deal about some clients, um, as you would do as a personal trainer, that you just replicate that studio format. Um, and they're going to rave about your studio and get more people down there for you. So it's limitless there what you can do as, as a studio. Um, now, number five is execution. So I just need to fly back through here, guys. Sorry about this.
There we go, the execution. So the last thing that we're going to talk about today, the five steps, is the execution. I just touched on it there briefly with that final slide about when most studios go wrong, <clears throat> and that was probably the negative component of execution. But after you've gone through the first four steps, you should have a very, very clearly defined idea about what your studio is going to be. So you have the vision, you'll have the model and the blueprint about what type of studio you want it to be, the demographic you want it to fit into, um, and the people that you want to service, the belief, the belief in yourself that you can do it, and the belief that you can be a studio owner. Okay, and that's key. You might work yourself into it a little bit. Uh, it might take a little while, but as long as you've got that belief, you'll be able to do it properly. The resources are paramount. You've got to have all those people around you helping you. You've got to look at bank balances, um, projections, budgets, etc. Um, uh, materials, equipment, um, talking to council, getting the right lease, finding the right location. And then finally, like I said, the execution of all these things together. So how you roll it out. What I like to do is I like to have a process. When I got to step four with my studio, when I talk about setting up studios, um, when we get to step four and we've worked everything else out, the execution is a plan. It's another plan altogether. So it's, for example, the first three months, we're going to concentrate on X, Y, and Z. It might be the setup of the studio. It might be, obviously, uh, getting a big sales process, getting people in the door to cover the rent uh, for the six months following the first three-month rent-free period. Um, then we're looking at uh, you know, the, um, the programs, obviously, that we're going to roll out. So they will all be in the blueprint, but we're going to make those a reality. And we're going to start to roll out those programs properly. And the execution will just be a step-by-step -step process on how you roll out that studio format. Okay, and it goes on for years. You know, the execution is the final step, and it keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. We could even throw a sixth step in there and say the maintenance, um, the maintenance of the studio, keeping people happy, keeping those customers coming back, um, looking at the marketing plan year to year. What did work? What didn't work? Let's replicate that. Let's flip that. Let's try something else this time. It's an ongoing thing. You know, it's I guess it's an animal, and it's organic. You know, this studio of yours will just keep on growing and growing and growing, not necessarily forwards or upwards all the time, sometimes sideways and around, and then come up again. So, you know, it happens in peaks and troughs as well. Our industry is very seasonal, and you guys know that already. You know, over the New Year's break, it's tough. We take a bit of a hit um, in our personal training areas, um, but studios can keep on ticking over with memberships um, and with passive revenue through online programs. Uh, and other things you might have going on in the background too. So, I guess what I'm at, at the end of the at the end of the day, guys, the conversation we just had today, the five steps. Um, it's not, uh, you know, the perfect model is in. You know, it's not a, an answer for you. You know, how do I start my own studio and how do I go through the process? It's the stuff that you need before you start your own studio. Going for a personal 